It is time to continue. So this is the beginning of my second recording session, and I just want to comment that yes, I have read your many, 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 many comments about how apparently when they shuffles the card, you can tell which one goes on top, and so if you can follow what that one is, then that's actually the same card, and that all is continuous and stuff. Do you have what it takes to defeat the rats? It might be the most repeatedly commented on topic ever in my channel's history since that time I played Salt and Sanctuary and everyone was like, why isn't he using the crossbow? Does anyone else- is anyone else bothered he's not using the crossbow? Use the crossbow, asshole. Uh, which was a while ago. So that was the goblet upgrade. So we, we actually did the whole thing in one session. Neat. The Jack of Plague. Three ratman huntings and three angry mobs are in there. And the curse is... The player loses 5 gold for every fail, and 10 gold for every huge failure chance card. I assume when they get picked, right? Not when they get drawn? Ah, the rats. They have swarmed up from the dark places beneath the realms of humanity, and now squat amongst your cities, and feast, and shriek, and hunt, and writhe. Neat. Also... What was that up there? Lore. Here is a beast who hates your kind, and has grown fat and evil with that hatred. The Jack of Plague will kill you and suck the marrow from your bones. That wasn't very nice. That's rather, uh... Whoa. We've quickly increased the amount of things that are allowed in each deck, huh? So we have 18 and 20. So I guess these must get much get continuously longer. That last one was already getting long, so maybe I maybe I will cut some of these runs into multiple episodes based on how long some of them get. I thought I'd do one run per episode, but I think they might be getting a bit longer than that. We'll see. All right, so let's see what the suggested one worked worked out like. So good variety of weapons. It's basically every single t yeah. It's actually an entire list of unique items with no duplicates, as far as I can tell. That's not that's not unreasonable. And then the encounter deck. Let's see. I see a purple, I see a, tr a blue, red, and a green. Isn't that every color, basically? There's a red Smuggler's Wharf up there. Could I add that in too, then? Just to keep those going? Local Peasant. We've already used you. And the Winding Trail. Suddenly, a tree falls across your path. Don't need that one. Dead King's Hall. This one I might want to hold on to, because you can get a lot of good stuff. It's not bad. Mr. Lionel. In the Devil's Choice. Eh, maybe, let's try to keep unlocking new stuff if I can. This stuff can't be removed, apparently. Okay. I assume that if without Mr. Lionel, if I don't have a shield, I assume I have to dodge out of the way of every incoming attack instead of doing a, a parry. I don't know if I've ever done a single fight yet without a shield so far, surprisingly. So Smuggler's Wharf. Devil's Wager. Charity and Dust Storm and River. Sure. Ah. Whole thing's maxed out. We don't know what this is yet, right? Yeah, we can't find out till it- wait. Map reveal, map shuffle. So it so it still gives me an idea of what it does, even though it's not, I'm not supposed to know? Map reveal gloves. Huh. Eh? I, I feel like I want to just encounter everything at some point. I want to do everything that'll unlock things for me, and I want to do everything that I've never done before, just to experience every card. So I'll prioritize tokens and new over all else. This is probably a bad idea, by the way. I'm not strategizing at all. None of these cards are chosen because they'll work out well for me, or they're not, they're not part of a build. It's literally like I'm just trying to quickly grow the deck. So we'll see if that's even vaguely reasonable. Oh, cool. This thing has, like, categories. So there's new category, token category, and encounters category for the, the bumpers for navigation. So what do I want to do with these? We tried the Curse of the Lion Prince last time, and I failed to check before, but this is the important other detail, which was became apparent while I was using those things, is that they come out with, a, they start off with equipment, 
So what I failed to check here was that uh, each character has a starting equipment. So here you can see how much health he starts off with. That's a big deal. So I would have known that he starts off with 40, which is really low. We get 5 health from eating, we lose 10 from starving, and uh, his helm is what causes him to... Uh, no, the, oh yeah, his helm is what makes him heal faster, but he starts off with a shield and light armor and a sword. Which means I can actually pick characters that start off with... Uh, what's this last one? The goblet upgrades. Which means I can actually pick off characters that starts off, start off with shields if I want to. Which seems to be a lot of them. Let's look at the various... the... the default mode. So default mode starts off with an axe and a shield. Okay, so you just start off with a shield now, so Lionel's not even needed then, unless he's gonna give me something more powerful. Soldier's training. Let's see, chance cards are more difficult. But you do increase damage as your combo meter rises. Did start off, start off with any cool things? Heavy armor. Soldier's furor. Attack speed increased by 10%, and cooldown time is increased by 10%. So there's cool stuff to be found here, but you have to look through them all. Ooh, throw a poison dart. That's neat. Effective against bandits. And when you enter a level, all encounters that may have a chance card event are indicated. So there's a few neat options here. What was the one that was exploration based? About the stairs? Let's see. It might, it might have been the explorer's gift. He starts off with the explorer's helmet. It reveals sta uh, stairs encounter upon entering a level and grants a gold bonus for revealing every encounter on a level. So this this character encourages you to go to every single room. Uh, starts off with light, light armor, shield, weapon, really basic generic stats, and he has the Lost Island stat. Uh, to start the preparations of your trip, find the Lost Island, then you need to uh, you need to put up some gold for supplies and equipment. He can't wear heavy armor. But moving over complete encounters costs no food! I like this character idea. Let's play with him. I did choose him, right? Yeah. Let's give it a go. This game's fun so far. Our Lord of Plague does like to rub your nose in misfortune. That's a lot of purple. Was he supposed to keep talking? I feel like the subtitles had more to say, but he didn't say anything else out loud. His dialogue seems kind of glitched, where sometimes it doesn't match the subtitles, and sometimes the subtitles go too fast or too slow, or skip entirely, or disappear for chunks of time. The subtitles have been weird so far. So the bad news is there's four different directions to go in. Uh, the good news is I have the ability to not cost anything when I go over explored tiles, so I can go check every single side out on purpose. I already know which one's the exit, and I suffer no additional cost. So not a bad time to be playing this character. Loan. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. In a busy market town, you are approached by a shopkeeper on the verge of losing his store. If you lend me gold I need to save my store, I will repay you one day with interest. Okay, I have gold, so I'll give him the ten gold. Shopkeeper gratefully accepts your gold, saying, You won't forget this! This card's token's now yours. <laughs> I basically just paid 10 gold for a token, but if we wait, maybe I'll get more than 10 gold back later? If he's not a crook? Huh. Gold payback. After 10 steps, the player draws 3 gold cards. Powerful. I will have to rebalance that next time. No kidding. 3 gold cards is a lot after 10 steps. Neat. Your prize. Let, let me double check real quick. What was the cur how'd the curse work again? Oh, it, it, that's a blessing, apparently. Uh, play... Right. Failure and heavy failure lead to gold loss. Had to remind myself real quick. It cost me nothing, yay! Twisted Canyon. Again. A chance of getting a nice weapon. You see a weapon glinting, blah blah blah. Go get it. Okay, so the one on the far right is the failure. Oh. So this one was on top. Ta-da! There we go. So that pretty much that it's strong contender in favor of the idea that that works for sure. I watched which one was the failure and saw because I only knew, I knew only one was the failure and it didn't go on top, so I just picked the one that went on top. Desperate measures again. We get this card a lot. 
Well, it's clearly an upgrade, so we're going to do that. Yeah. Yep. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Oh, shut up. You're just saying that at random for no reason. It's not a, you're not even saying it in response to things that are actually decisions that are have any other possible decision to be made to be made. The maiden. I just got 20 I got 20 gold just for stepping on her. Like that's not the gold payback, is it? That's supposed to be 10 steps. One day in a shady forest, you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. I am Merit of the Forest Folk. So I can ask for longer life supplies or gold. Supplies are not a terrible idea because I don't have much going on there. But maybe we'll get more before long and it won't be that big of a deal. Let's get let's ask for health. Longer life. As you wish. Two health cards. 15% ma max health. More health to work with. Much good meat to Five do. max health. So we just learned that the 15% bonus health is based on your current... Uh, it's based on your current amount of health and not based on... It's not, it's not a multiplier given to your health in general. Because uh, if I had 15% bonus health, then me getting five more health after that would have taken it to like 121 probably. If it was a flat 15% bonus. But it's only a one-time 15% bonus. Let's see. Said that Sharp Eyes Adventure... Uh, it is said that sharp-eyed adventurers may protect themselves from the worst of Lady Luck's contrary nature. Farewell, mortal. Not much to be grabbed from there. Hey, I got health from eating. But not- but I didn't eat any food, did I? Does this thing tell me its current cooldown? After ten steps. Here's the question. Can I trigger those ten steps by walking around like this? Where it doesn't cost me food. Three. Four, five, yay! I'm sure you are grateful for that. Good fortune, twenty gold. Ten gold. Three gold. So as expected, I can totally run that out and abuse the fact that I uh, don't. I can walk around for free right now to get the gold right now, so that I can be ready for other future things that may arrive in the re in the ensuing ten turns. Our hero needs sustenance badly. Gauntlet reference. Red warrior needs food badly. All right, we're on the second floor now. Stairs are on the far corner. Let's go up. Each of these cards is crafted from your memories and built from your experience. I created them, but only in the abstract. It is the importance you place on them that makes them real. Kind of already knew that, but uh, he's now exact. He's now uh, making it as explicit as possible. Oh, a jeweler. Good thing I did the gold. The gold thing. Cause here's a merchant. Shady Grove. Jewelers. Blah blah blah. Pretty consistently the same dialogue. So what do you have to sell? But uh, mercenary contract. Once per combat, press right bumper to activate an aura that makes every successful strike drop gold. Not a terrible idea. Damocles, that's the dagger one. Why this? It just flipped over when I highlighted it. Why was that? Why was it face down? Healer's ring. Whenever you he gain healing, you also get plus one gold. No benefit if they were already fully healed. Just any kind of healing gives me plus one gold. Does that mean I get plus one gold every time I take a step where I heal, for example? Consuming shame. All weapons attacks are enhanced with powerful poison that taints the victim's mind and body. I can afford all these, I think. That's unusual. Once per comment, this thing could make a decent amount of money if I buy it early on. The mercenary contract. Yeah? Every successful strike will drop gold. If I get it early in the playthrough, it'll probably end up generating more money than it costs to get, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. What does the three mean? Three, nine, seven... Is that just because it's part of a deck of cards, or does that number mean something? Oh well. Let's try it out. Artifacts give you powerful abilities to use in combat. I assume I have nothing to sell? Oh, I can sell off my axe. There we go. And we can buy food, which is kind of a big deal right now, because we're not doing so hot. 
So let's try not to die, <laughs> if we can. And it doesn't cost me food to do this. Yay! Asleep in the Spirits forest. Roaming the darkness. With the struggles, the boundaries are weaker than they've ever been. Let's do it. We play for a token now. While sleeping in the forest, you are jolted awake by a voice calling your name. You see a vaguely human-shaped ghost rushing towards you. You are quick to your feet, weapon already in hand. The ghost stops abruptly, hands signaling that it means no harm. Its voice is weak and distant. You forget me already. Has this place already corrupted you so? Lower your weapon? I should not be here. I fear his servants already know where I am. For a brief moment, the ghost's pale eyes feel achingly familiar. Please come home soon. You blink and the ghost is gone. At your feet is a bag of food. The dealer draws one food card. Card's token's now yours. Oh, wow. Well, that's so much for me paying for money for food. <laughs> that quickly rectified itself. And I, won't, I shouldn't be hurting for food since I can backtrack freely, too. Goblin King's Halls, one. Again, a token is at stake. I think at this rate, that's going to be at stake every single tile along the way, because there's so many of them. At one night, as you lie in a forest clearing, you are disturbed by the sight of a shadowy figure watching from the darkness. Well met, the goblin exclaims, stepping into the light and sitting by the fire. Just the armed warrior I've been seeking. Ask him to elaborate. The goblin makes himself comfortable. My name is Mr. Lionel, and I have had it, and I have a tale of woe to share with you, and perhaps an opportunity for you to make a tidy profit from my misfortune. He goes on to tell the story of his troubles with the King of the Goblins while lamenting his subsequent banishment from the Goblin community. The King could have shown leniency, he concludes, given that his daughter and I were both drunk from the excellent Dulician brandy served at his coronation. Instead, he opted to make his first official act my banishment. The fool will regret it, uh, though. For now, it is time for revenge, he says eagerly, taking out a strange amulet. For hundreds of years, the Goblin Kings have gathered treasure and hoarded it in a series of enchanted and ever-changing treasure vaults. Only the Goblin King himself knows where his treasure vaults are hidden, and now I have a way to find them. I just need to lock a lock of elven hair to complete this magical device. Oh no. <laughs> Isn't... Like, the only elf we know is the lady that keeps helping us, right? So couldn't it be a kind of a bad idea to get to go for an elven hair? Unless I could just ask for it. Maybe she would just do it. Accept the task. Excellent. Just get the hair by any means possible. Don't worry, I'll find you again once your quest is complete. So now we get the token, and then in the next, in the next uh, mission we do, we'll then get follow-up on that. This is a strange structure, because it's almost like... Every, uh... Every individual level that we play is a relatively self-contained forward to, to end, go kill the boss at the end thing. But each one can trigger an individual step of a long-running storyline. But only one of each storyline as we go along. It's already three tokens there. And uh, with that, he returns to the shadows and sits down behind a bush, watching you. Creepy. <laughs> That's creepy. He just watches from behind a bush. Why either leave or sit by the fire? Don't be weird. All right, Lionel. Hey, twenty more gold. Cross this time. Right, I got that random spike of gold because of my explorer class, where if I explore every single tile, I get money. So when I step on the final card before the before leaving I get 20 gold right there that's what my confusion was because I was in the middle of trying to trigger the I was trying to trigger the three gold cards and I got a hundred I got 20 gold and I didn't know why but that's my class as you plunder the secrets of your memories you'll gain new cards some you'll wish you'd left untouched the class I'm playing as right now honestly just feels like it has no downsides but it kind of does uh it does block you from wearing heavy armor, which could be useful, but I do like being fast, so it might be the best suited character for my playstyle. 
The path is blocked by a river. The water is clear, but fast flowing. Attempt to cross? Did... What happened last time? Did I... I, f I thought we hit this one before. Oh well. Let's try. Huge success! I'll just watch the failure one. Well, failures on top- uh, huge failures on top, or failure, whatever. Nope. Right, I got this before, but I need huge success to get the token, don't I? Your light armor makes the crossing relatively easy. You reach the other side, cold and wet, but unharmed. There we go. In we go. Floor three. Or region three. Ever deeper into the subterranean pit. I'm enjoying that gold bonus. You embarked on the next leg of your, your adventure. I wonder how long this one's gonna be. Oh, do we know how long it's gonna be based on how many go on whether or not there's gonna be there's more gold cards in the bottom corner? We'll have to keep an eye on that. We well, I guess we know regardless because uh if I'm an explorer, I know where the exit is, and if there's no exit, that means it's the last floor. But let's keep an eye out in that bottom right corner where the bronze cards are, and see if the bronze cards disappear on the last floor, because that could also be useful for playing when I'm playing as other characters to tell whether or not I'm on the last floor yet. Because he's drawing from that deck, and I think he might use all of them, because they keep increasing the number that we are supposed to include. What brings you to play the game? Ha. I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. So you spent years crafting cards based on my history, and you and you know how to... You, like, you're, you're playing a game based on my memory, but you don't know why I'm playing. Traveling Mage. Shady Grove. Specific items. Blah, blah, blah. In we go. Yeah, it's weird how they flip over while you highlight them. But only sometimes. Alchemical silver, right bumper to attack faster with each successful strike. Longer your combo, the more explosive the reaction. Hearn's antlers, lizard men take double damage from players' attacks. That's pretty neat. But, I, but I'd have to lose my current antlers, which I don't think I. I'm, I'm, I mean, my current helm, and I don't know if I even can take my helm off if it's a class helm. Uh, dragon ring, while all dragon relics are equipped, receive 50% bonus max health and full healing after every combat. Not bad, but you have to actually find them all. And I've never seen the other ones, so that doesn't bode super well. But, uh, 50% bonus max health is a, big, is a big deal. Otherwise, though, it doesn't say that the individual item gives me any bon any benefit. Plunderer's Cap. When you draw supplies, draw two instead of one. That's a great item, but I can't afford it anyway. It has a lock on it, doesn't it? Can I? Oh, I can sell it. It's just... I probably lose my class or something if I sell it, because it is letting me pop this up at least. I like my 20 bonus gold though, even if the plunderer's hat is pretty neat in its own right. We haven't had a fight yet, have we? We're on the third floor. I say as I open up the fight, probably. Nope. A wife's fury. You are braver than I if you're willing to get involved in a marital dispute. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. While traveling through a small town, you are accosted by a furious woman who shouts at you from the door of her homestead. You there. You look like you can handle yourself. My husband was supposed to be home hours ago. But instead, he's with his pals, drinking away all our coin. They, they left the spoils of their latest job here. If you go and teach him a lesson, you can take your pick. Well, I guess I'm gonna beat up her her uh, husband then. Let's do it. Go to the tavern and confront the husband. Now there's someone with some sense. I would go crack his skull myself, but our dragon cow is birthing a litter. Our your dragon cow is birthing litter, and it might burn the whole place down. You guys, you guys breed dragons? That's the most interesting thing about this card. We're just gonna throw that aside like it's no big deal. You find the woman's husband. We meet the Jack again. Did you think him done before? Oh, no. Shuffled back into the deck to rise again to the top. As are we all. So he's reoccurring. He has three little things on his health. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, he has three little things on his card that I think might be health. 
There's three circles, one of them's empty, and I've defeated him once, so maybe if you defeat him three times, he goes away forever. But I'm just making shit up at this point. <laughs> that guy also has that many. I wonder. You corner the woman's husband in the local tavern. He is busy playing a drinking game with his friends. You can threaten him or join his drinking game. So many possibilities. And who knows what the actual, uh... What the actual token comes from. It's, it could be, it, like... I don't think the tokens are based on loot, so like it doesn't necessarily matter that I can get loot from her, from her. Like, what if uh, it's just a story branch? Eh, you don't know until you try. It's completely. I think it's completely unknowable in this case which one would be the thing that leads to another event. Like maybe you become maybe you uh become comrades with the Jack of Dust and blah blah blah. Well, let's join this drinking game. Hi. Well. Oh, no. Now I definitely didn't see where the card went. Whee! <laughs> that was random for sure. So yeah, that was... There, I don't know how you'd follow that one. That was quick, and it shuffled twice. I followed one of them and saw that it went on the top of the deck, but then I uh, saw it get reshuffled again and didn't, and at that point, who knows? So the game knows its own issue then. Draw one equipment card. Uh, you entertain the local tavern folk with your drinking capacity and tales of adventure. Oh, we got the token. And we got a shield that I already had. A strong left arm is as important as a strong right arm, after all. Oh. Here is your token. Well done. Uh, that token is not... It bothers me the token is, like, floating above the bowl. <laughs> it's not... It didn't go in the bowl, it's just floating on its rim weirdly, and it's gonna... That... That looks strange. It is tantalizing, though, to, to keep building up this list of uh, unlockables you're going to get at the end of the mission. Smuggler's Wharf. I will happily wager on the outcome. Nolwich Port. You have what it takes. That's not very nice. Nolwich Port is little more than wooden planks sticking out over water. It's a den of iniquity. Iniquity. Visitors and inquirers are obviously not welcome. You spend more time. Uh, you spend your time getting acquainted with the workers of the wharf, looking for avenues to gain information. You have found three ways you might find out about the missing ships: steal some logs, bribe a worker to help a captain drown or ca help us captain drown his sorrows. Uh, oh, you mean like? You mean records? I'm like, why would stealing logs help? <laughs> they meant documents. Ship logs. <laughs> I thought they meant lumber. I'm like, why am I stealing lumber? Let's drink with the captain. In what passes for a bar in this shanty town, you find a ship uh, captain drowning her sorrows. They must be frightful sorrows because she's dreading them in Delisian brandy. Which is apparently a recurring theme in this specific playthrough. You pull up a stool next to her, and while inquiring about her misfortune, attempt to find out what she may know about the missing boats. You can tell the captain knows something. But she's not parting with you yet. However, she seems pleased to have company. Continue to drink with the captain. Let's do it. Drink more. Drink more. You gulp down another small glass of terrible, terrible brandy. It takes surprisingly little for the captain to open up about the missing boats and her own fears that she and her boat might be next. The captain only reveals one thing. Highbinder. And will say nothing more on the matter. You plan to head back to Carlo at the landlocked lubber and see what you can do with the information you've gleaned. The card's token is now yours. Yay! That's like five now or six? Now they're just disappearing behind each other, so we can't even tell how many are there. <laughs> we have four foods, so we're not doing amazing there. We could definitely use more. Bandit attack. Bandits, eh? Make an enemy of one, and you've made an enemy of all. One can't help but admire their single-mindedness. Oh, they got more powerful as a result of me finishing the first world, or whatever you want to call it, the first suit. That's probably why it says two out of three. I think I figured it out. I think. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes I just make shit up. Everyone gets mad about me making assumptions, but they don't get mad when I'm right. <laughs> Uh-oh. That was concerning. Didn't think I was gonna escape that for a moment there. More gold, please. 
they were not joking about the word dr drop gold either. The gold just covers the floor. Which is rather annoying because you can't pick it up if it's on the floor. Yeah, I don't think you can get the gold when it goes on the floor. That's kind of a bummer. Among the bodies, you find a scrap of parchment with a rough description of you, plus an offer of reward. Get a game card. Hey! Well, there goes that problem. Murder solves all of my problems. Battle at Brooktop. These places are rife with power. It is not chance that you should meet a warlock here. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. A light draws you to a nearby hilltop, where you see a warlock disappear in a cloud of sulfur, leaving behind his summoned minions. Draw two monster cards. Alrighty then. Skulls and dust! Let's get him. I, I, I'm, I have my anti-undead anti weapon. Yeah, that, that, pretty much, that pretty much seals the deal there. Skulls are one of three, dust is two of three. And we saw that, that the uh, bandits got more powerful in the last... From the, from the goblet buff, if I remember correctly. Just gonna immediately use my power. I just... I, I bounced it back at him. Hello. He almost got me. Hello. That was close. Almost got myself in trouble. Come on me, I want money. Money, money, money. Am I still getting the buff that gives me bonus money? No, I think it wore off now. Just didn't want to miss out on any of that stuff on the ground. 83 gold. I think we're on our way to a... Oh, he fell through the ground. That was freaky. I think we're on our way to paying off the price of that artifact. Uh, two game cards. After the battle, you search the bodies for loot. Equipment! Angel's Wing. This helm abuse the wear. From here. There is little material gain to be made. Greater movement speed. I'll probably sell that. Uh, no. I like my explorer helmet. Because I like money! As you climb down the other side of the hill, you spy what looks like the remains of an ancient temple of, an, of another... On a near... On another uh, nearby hilltop. Card's token is now yours. So the next token must be that other temple. So this is like a weird exercise in nonlinear storytelling, basically. Because logically he goes to that and visits that hilltop like next, but we won't see that hilltop until the next next time I play a level. Angry mob. So quick to anger. That's what makes them a mob, really. As you approach a small town in Witchburn, what a happy sounding name for a happy group of people. An angry mob of peasants marches forth and confronts you. The rat men have eaten all our food. We're starving. We demand food. I can give them half the food. Or try to avoid them or give them nothing. Are they gonna do they attack you if you give them nothing? I can afford to give food right now. You off, uh, offer to share half your food with the peasants. They gather around to see your offering. Haven't you got any more? Asked one of the peasants. This is something, but we've got to ration it out to everyone. You leave the simple folk to their troubles. Seriously, it's not my problem. I'm already kind of dealing with your problem on my own. You can do something. <laughs> I'm one person. All right, off to floor four. A horse is a fine companion. I'm sure you'll leave this one in time. You do not seem to have the temperament for friends, even in the animal kingdom. He had way more dialogue to, for that than I thought he was going to, because it was just an innocuous floor change. Uh, the, let's see if that bronze card disappears or not, the whole, if the deck finishes off. Because I think this will be the last floor. Hush. Can you hear the way his claws scratch the tiles? Nope, I was wrong. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. This is clearly the last floor because there's no exit, but the deck is still in the bottom right corner, so it does not go away. Uh, but because I have this uh, helm, I know that we're not at the boss yet. Unfortunately, I have no way of knowing which one's the boss, so I don't, I can't really explore very thoroughly. Oh well. I'm not hurt, so I could probably take him down. I have 120 health and I've never been hit yet, I think. Ratman hunting. Now you begin to trespass upon the Ratman's hunting grounds. 
you stumble upon a rat men hunting party. Prepare to defend yourself. Four of Plague. Watch out for fire trap. Try to keep that in mind. Any projectiles for me to worry about? Plague by name and plague by nature. Run! Why did I walk into that? Oh! Unblockable attack. Taking some damage here. Oh, I wasn't really picking up the gold very well. Ah, I got 115. I'm doing fine. Why did mercenary contractors glow? Wait, did I lose that just now? You recover some food from the rat carcasses. The dealer draws one food gain card. Three food. Okay, let's learn something. Is it is it gone? My artifact is gone. So the number on your artifact is how many times you can use it before it disappears. Now we know that. Because the mercenary contract has now disappeared. Um, pick arbitrarily. Whee! Field of Poppy has been wondering about that I've one. I've always felt a kinship to the puppy. Together we help you forget. And also recall. So whatever this thing is, it does not give me a, uh, it doesn't give me a new token. There's no token on it, but it does something? I think it's a deck shuffle? You wander among a field of poppies. Too late you realize that the poppies are making you sleepy. Whoa! So right now the top right corner is the Jack of Plague, but is that gonna move? Let's try to keep an eye on it, because I think it said shuffle before. Oh, that was incomprehensible to look at. <laughs> I have no idea. You wake up groggy and disoriented. So the jack could be anywhere. Oh well. Hey, it's an angry mob. Once the ratmen begin to creep towards the edge of the town, anger follows shortly behind. So they're confronting me again. They've eaten all our food. Can I try to avoid them? You turn around and head away from the crowd. Get him! Run! Uh, good luck. Ah. Uh, oh, well. Yay! Starving peasants don't have the energy to catch you and flee, because they're all starving. Ha <laughs> ha, they don't have food. Take that life. What's the odds that you'd still be in the top right corner after a shuffle? Plague, and pestilence, and blood, and teeth. Well, that happened. I think this is only our third fight this episode. This was actually, I think this one actually went faster than, than uh, our previous level did. That was like the final one of a suit though, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Jack of Plague, faster and stronger than normal rat men. The beast inspires all vermin around him to strike faster. The more damage he sustains. He is a beast who hates your kind and has grown fat and evil with that hatred. The Jack of Plague will kill you and suck the marrow from your bones. So it sounds like I want to kill all of his adds first, because if he takes damage, then his allies attack faster. There's a token in it for you if you win. There's a token in it for you if you beat the level. <laughs> it's kind of a given in that case, I think. And I guess you might be able to replay them. In fact, you almost certainly can with a randomized game. Replayability is like one of the primary selling points, usually. Those are always a neat reveal screen. Alright, everybody. Nope. Nope. Just gonna go after these guys real quick if I can. Ow. Got me mid-swing. Oop. Watch out. Ow. Got me. Whoa! That's a lot of projectiles in a row. You're rapid fire, aren't you? Yep. Let's take out his last ad. What's he doing over there? He's getting all glowy. 
Oh, crap. Oh, well, that's a long combo, isn't it? Watch out. Oh, wow. I need, to wait. I need to wait for it to actually end. You got a silly voice. Do you know Do you know the rest from Grimrock? I'm just curious. Now I'm just thinking about when does Grimrock 3 come out? <laughs> the queens and kings of the rat kind have lost a child here today. The token is yours. Let us see what you do with your newfound abilities. Well, that wasn't very nice. Your reward. What? Stop saying. Why are you being mean? <laughs> He's being all judgmental now. It's like, congratulations on your slaughter. A pa some parents are going to be missing their child tonight, you monster. <laughs> like, that, that took a turn. He wasn't really talking that way before, was he? For loaning gold to a merchant, you receive. The marketplace. For showing the ghost you are merciful, you receive. Asleep in the inn. For joining Mr. Lionel's quest, this card contains a token. The maiden. Oh. Oh, it's a variation of the maiden that, that has a different outcome. Oh wait, no. They meant that the maiden card gained the purple token. Interesting. So he wants he wants me to sabotage the maiden card. That's rough. For going to the tavern to retrieve the woman's husband, you receive tavern tavern wager. For infiltrating Norwich Port, you received the following card: the Lion Locked Lover Two. What? Now it's locked. So it, it now it's now is it stuck in my deck because it has a lock on it? For exploring Brook Till Brook Top Hill, you re I received two cards. Twenty-five gold fortune card and the altar. As a reward for defeating the rat man, my rat man Jack, you receive these new cards: Berserker Armor, Scorching Zeal, Culling the Rat Man, King of Dust, Devil's Carnival, and Ember Town Hero. It's a lot of event cards. For defeating my Ratman Jack, I will glad to, uh, will give you a new challenge. Ratman hunting. Ratman hunting. <laughs> Ratman hunting. And they're all locked, so they presumably are stuck in my deck now, and so I'm just gonna have rats attacking me. Oh my goodness. Come play. I do not want to just sit here. Look at the cards you have earned. Now we have enough to begin a real game. Oh, now we're playing for real.